crafty friends welcome to another in our geometric shape series today we are going to be working with triangle stamps and i'm using these three from this area this stamp set don't worry if you haven't got this stamp set you can use whatever stamps you fancy so to me triangles always shout bunting and bunting shouts celebration so i'm going to make some invitations today with bunting as the motif so i would use these stamps somehow to add a string of bunting across the front of my card and i think i'm going to work straight on to a five by seven card blank today no panels or anything so this could be a one layer or very few layer card the first thing I want to do is create the string. So I'm going to do this freehand with a pencil to start with. I'm going to swoop with my pencil, but instead of moving from my wrist, which could give quite a jerky line, I'm going to use my whole arm and pivot from my kind of shoulder and elbow and practice the movement a few times and then draw my line something like that that's actually a bit low so i'm going to flip that over and maybe it's going to come in from that direction about there so ooh, like that so now i've got a nice swoop to add my bunting to i don't really want a pencil line it's too faint i want a nice strong black line so i'm going to follow that again but with a pen so like that not exactly the same but it's in the ballpark you might have a thin line stamp that you could curve and that would work well but what i do want to do is now and i am going to still pivot from the elbow is i'm going to make this a multi line string to give it a bit of extra weight and i think the easiest way for me to get my stamps lined up is as usual to use a stamp positioner and i'm going to take each stamp and decide which way up i want it so i think i'll have this stamp here i'm going to have it coming off to give the impression that there's a longer string of bunting and i'm going to line it up so that the top of the stamp is a little bit below the line i don't want the stamped image on the line and i am going to put my head over this so i can get it lined up exactly where i want it but i'll cut that out for you because you don't need to see the top of my head one thing i do want to do before i finalize my position is add some glue to the back of each of these stamps they're silicon stamps which means they're not as sticky as photopolymer stamps so a little bit of stick glue just helps them stick to the positioner door or an acrylic block right i'm doing the head thing now i want these stamps to be fairly bold so i'm going to use a strong colored ink this is pixie dust from the catherine pooler party collection which seems appropriate given i'm doing a party invite and gently stamp that down that looks fine but i'm going to give it a second go and now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with all three stamps, repeating it until I get all the way to the far end. I'm going to leave a little gap between each flag or banner or bit of bunting, whatever the individual triangles are called, just so I can put some little doodled bows there. So they look like they're tied onto the string. Now you could use more than one colour, I'm just going to stick with one to keep it clean and simple.
so I've got all my bunting stamped now before I put away my stamp positioner I'm going to stamp my sentiments so this stamp here says party time and this could go maybe up here in this part to keep all this empty clean and simple or it could go maybe down here to balance things out a bit I think I'm going to pop it up here I do want to bring the card in a bit though because when I try and stamp here sometimes um, things get a bit squished so I'm going to move that away from there and I think we'll just go with the same colour again keeping it simple You could leave it like that if you wanted, but I'm going to actually draw around my triangle banners with my black pen. And I'm going to do a couple of lines around each to mimic that wobbly line up there. And each bit of bunting is going to get a bit of string and a bow. Sometimes the bow might be connected to the next bit of bunting. If you've got bow stamps, you could use that. So that is a very clean, very simple party invitation made with the triangular stamps, a sentiment stamp and a pen. You can't really get much more clean and simple than that. There's lots of empty white space here. If you weren't worried about white space and you wanted to bring in a bit more energy, you could splatter on some ink or some metallic ink. You could heat emboss the party time. So that's that one done. Next, we're going to do something a bit more complicated. We're going to do some heat embossing and emboss resist. So I've got some mixed media paper here because I'm going to use the same Catherine Pooler ink and it blends best on a mixed media paper, I find. Add some glue to my door. Got my stamps lined up. I'm going to treat a paper with cornflour to reduce static and greasy fingerprints and embossing powder sticking where I don't want it and stamp my images in embossing ink I'm going to swing that around and do the same down the other side. Let me just make sure I've got that in the right place. And I'm dipping this in clear embossing powder. And I shall heat that with my heat tool. So that's all set and cooled. I'm going to pop it on my grit mat and add some colour. I'm actually going to bring in Sweet 16 first, which is a lighter shade of the pixie dust. go in with pixie dust and a finger dauber and add some variation to each triangle so some of it will be sweet 16 some of it will be pixie dust and that again as I say just a bit of variation
So now that's all done, I'm just going to go over with my microfiber cloth to buff off any ink that's sitting on top of the heat embossing. What you could do instead of doing it this way around is you could add ink to your paper or you could use coloured cardstock, then heat emboss but use white or any other colour actually, white, gold, silver, copper, whatever colour of embossing powder and then you'll achieve a very similar look. And now all I'm going to do is cut these out, I'm going to snip them out individually first like this just so they're easier to handle and then i'll pick the ones that i want to use maybe sort them out by pattern and then cut each one out individually i'm going to leave a little gap of unembossed inked paper around the edge and i'm not going to worry too much about getting a perfectly straight cut. I want these to have a whimsical nature to them to match my whimsical black string. Now I've got three piles of bunting flags but before I stick them on I'm going to add my sentiment. This says let's celebrate and it's the same font as the party time one. I think it came from the same stamp set and I'm going to pop that in the corner just so we can compare and contrast the position of the sentiment. So now we can add these. You could pop them on and draw around them or you could leave them without a line. You could just use all the same ones or you can alternate them. I'm rotating the flags each time I add them so that the designs are coming in from different directions that adds a bit more variation. You could add a bit of craft foam or a bit of card under each one to give them a bit of extra dimension if you want it. I think I'm just gonna go straight onto the card. And I shall press those down with a bit of jelly paper just to keep everything clean and I can trim off the excess. And I can attach my flags with a little doodled bow. So there we have two ways of using these stamps to create bunting on a very clean and simple party invitation. I think if you wanted you could actually combine the two techniques. I'm going to do a bit of experimenting with that idea now. So I'm going to start with a swoop but maybe not take it so far across the card. Maybe a third of the way in to about a third of the way. But now I'm also going to add a second row, I'm going to come in from maybe a third of the way up here to somewhere like that. And I think I'll add my stamped bunting here along this string. And I'm going to use pixie dust to stamp these three here. Take that and rotate it. 
I might have to shuffle this down a bit, get away from the edge. And now we can bring in our heat embossed bunting. So there we have a combined design stamped in the background because they are less bold and less obvious So there we have a combined design. I haven't drawn around the stamped triangles in black ink because I thought too much black ink will just confuse things and these are in the background so they're, they're receding somewhat. The black line would bring them to the front so I'm leaving those as is. I've got a stamp here that says have fun. Again, it's from the same stamp set as the let's celebrate and party time. And I think that sits nicely in there like that. And then it leaves this area here nice and empty. And for the sake of consistency, I we'll use the same pixie dust ink. So we've got three cards now, one with the pattern stamped directly on the card, one with an embossed resist technique and the card glued on, and then a combination of both. They're very clean, very simple. You can obviously zhuzh them up if you want. I'm not sure which one's my favourite. I probably would have to say the combined one because I do like this and I do like this. And when it comes to placement of sentiment, I think this works here because you've got this sort of crisscross area. I think this might be a bit too empty for my taste. So when it's just one row bunting, I think this looks best to my eye. But let me know what you think. What do you think of the placement of the sentiments and the techniques that we've used today? Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of what you can do with triangle stamps that you may already have in your stash. And I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.